Hello everyone, it's Helen here with Helen with Helen. Thanks for joining me. Today is cleaning day. I'm cleaning out closets, drawers, my car, the garage, <laughs> and I'm about to start putting some stuff away that we recently had hanging out around our house because my husband just had rotator cuff surgery. He's short 12 weeks ago and I'm actually really happy to start stowing this stuff away. I'd be happy if we never seen it again, but I thought that I should share with you guys some practical things that you might want to have on hand if you have to have rotator cuff surgery or somebody you know is going to have rotator cuff surgery because these are just some little hacks that really, really helped us over the last 12 weeks. And so I thought I'd share them with you. Um, none of this is rocket science. I'm definitely not going to get into the rotator cuff surgery portion of things today. In fact, I'd probably have to have him here with me so he can sort of help me with it. But I just thought that I would show you what we had on hand. And then that way, if you're about to have surgery, then you might want to grab a few of these things. The first thing that you're definitely, definitely going to want to splurge on, and we actually questioned splurge splurging on this. We were going to go the old fashioned way and just fill up bags of ice and just put it on his shoulder. And we're like, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Um, the doctor suggested that they have this ice machine and he was thinking, I don't want to pay the extra couple hundred dollars for the ice machine. I talked to a family member and she said, you need to get the ice machine. My husband's had two rotator cuff surgeries and it was like a lifesaver. <laughs> I told him that he decided that he would get the ice machine and it was probably his best friend for at least five to six weeks. And so here it is. I'm going to show you guys what this big guy looks like. This is the thing. I don't even know where I'm going to stash this, but we're definitely keeping this, this guy on hand. So here you go. This is the ice man. <laughs> you are going to want the Iceman. No baggie of ice can come even close to what this thing does. It's actually a really, really cool machine too. So you just pop it open, you fill it up with ice. So you're going to want to have a ton of ice on hand. Like I can't even tell you, like go buy like out the grocery store of ice, <laughs> but you're going to fill this up to the top and then you're going to fill it up with um, water, just like a cold water. You're going to pop your lid back on it. You're going to plug this guy in and then you're going to stick this over whatever shoulder you had. He had surgery on his right shoulder and not only did he have a severe torn rotator cuff, he had a torn labrum and he had a torn bicep. And so he did it good. It was, it was painful, but this icing right here just sits right here and there you go. And then you got to have a nurse on hand. I was the nurse. <laughs> I'm not a nurse. Um, it, to refill it like every few hours. So once the ice starts melting, you just kind of dump it out. You fill it back up with ice. You fill it up with some more water. And it's like Groundhog Day for weeks and weeks and weeks. But this right here was the absolute best investment. So when the doctor asks you and you think that like, I don't need that. I'll just throw some like packs of frozen veggies on it. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Get this guy. So you're going to want to have that on hand. The next thing that you're definitely, I think, going to want to splurge on. I don't know. Maybe not everyone, but I'm sure glad that we did, at least for the first couple of weeks. You're going to want to get some snap t-shirts, okay, or tank tops, whatever works for you, um, because it just makes life easier. It makes life easier for you, more comfortable for you, the patient, and it's going to make things easier for the nurse. And so we didn't even think that we were going to do it. And then we're like, you know what, let's just purchase a couple. We got them on Amazon. I think the ones that we got were 30 some dollars. We didn't want a bunch of them. We just thought at least if we have two, we can just keep washing them. Um, guys, these are ugly. <laughs> They're not awesome at all. I'm just going to be honest. Look at this. Okay. So this is what you got. Like we got it in gray. We got it in blue. And I think that in like maybe two other colors, but this is what we had here. And, but I thought, you know what? The only people coming over the house are going to be family members and they should love you no matter what. So even if it is a big, ugly t-shirt, <laughs> nobody cares. But right here, it just unsnaps just unsnaps so then you can just kind of nicely put the the healthy arm in there and then the other arm you just snap around it and you go up and voila if you are a woman and you're having rotator cuff surgery maybe one of those front snap bras would be really really helpful because that way you can just put in your good arm and then put the other arm like around it and then you can snap in front because if you're trying to put on a sports bra or some of those other things 
I don't think it's gonna work at all. And so maybe making an investment on some of those front snap or front um, fastening bras would be very, very beneficial. You can get those on Amazon too. So I would say definitely get those. I know that when I got breast implants many, many years ago, I got those when I was healing. And then I know when I got my breast implants removed, I got those because I was healing. <laughs> so it was really helpful. So I can only imagine it'd be even more helpful probably if you had a rotator cuff surgery. But splurge the 60 bucks or the 50 40 bucks and whatever and get yourself some snap t-shirts it really is helpful he only wore these honestly for maybe a couple weeks and he's like i hate these i'm gonna go back to my normal t-shirt just i think honestly he wanted to torture me <laughs> he's, i was scared i'm not going to lie i was nervous because i didn't want to hurt him so i'm like oh my gosh the last thing i want to do is hurt you when you're already hurting and anybody who's had this surgery already knows it's a real deal surgery there is a lot of pain involved and i'm like i don't want to hurt you and so i just like i was so scared to even like snap around it because it was swollen and it was big and i was just like oh no and then of course we got to keep in mind because you have to change out like the like the sling and the shower to a shower sling and then you have to get back into like this like really heavy duty sling and I'm just like I don't know but kudos to you nurses and doctors okay <laughs> because I'm just like what in the world I mean now we're 12 weeks post surgery and so by the end of it I was getting that sling and I was wrapping it around and I was velcroing that baby up but at first I was just like you even do this and then I had people tell me well it's just like a hunting backpack and this and that and I'm like because there was like a strap here and a strap here and a strap here and velcro here and there and I'm like oh my gosh <laughs> I actually cried the first night because I was just like I, I don't know if I would be able to do this and I'm scared and I'm just like but you know what after day two or day three I mustered it up I got my strength and I'm like we're gonna have to do this so like you know get your big girl pants on Helen and we did it we did it he's fine <laughs> I think yeah he's healing up all right so snap shirts you're going to want to have your water um ice machine and then you're also going to want to have i say some cold lace on hand i'm not going to try to make this tmi but that's what we do on this channel we already know we talk about everything because why not it's the truth you're going to want to have some cold lace on hand one because you've just been under anesthesia and if you've been under general anesthesia you already know that rocks your body for at least a few days it really does it's like everything's put to sleep so everything has to kind of wake back up and get moving and grooving and then of course you got to take into account that you're not drinking probably as much fluid you're not eating your normal diet um, you're definitely taking pain pills probably at least for a day or two so all of the above is going to mess with your bowels so you're going to want to have a colace on hand Listen to your doctor, whatever your doctor tells you to do. Some will tell you to start it right away so that you don't even have a problem. Some will tell you maybe to wait a couple days, but have it on hand just in case. I know that he did not respond well to the anesthesia. He was extremely nauseated coming out of surgery and then had to drive home a couple of hours so when he got here he was super nauseous for a couple of days all he wanted to do was drink a little bit of water and have some saltine crackers so have like all of those kind of things on hand whatever it is for you saltine crackers have some bread so you can just have some dried toast i don't know what works for you but saltine crackers were his best friend for at least a couple of days until that nausea subsided um definitely dealt with some constipation and so at one point he even said that he thought that was worse than how his shoulder was feeling for a few days because he was like, I'm so bloated. I feel so sick. And so definitely helped within a day and a half of taking this everything was back to normal this was not something he had to take for a week two weeks three weeks 12 weeks this was only something he had to take for the first couple of days however it might be different for everyone because he actually only stayed on his pain medication for a day and a half and then he came off of it and this is one of those surgeries that can be very very painful for some people but for him it was causing him so much nausea that he was just like i'm not going to be able to stay on it and I think what they had prescribed for his recovery was that maybe like the hydrocodone so after a day and a half he's like I'm off of it I'm just going to start taking Tylenol and I'm going to take um, ibuprofen I'm going to alternate them and so one thing that 
we did do is we just always kept a piece of paper there so we could keep track because you do start taking a lot of stuff, right? And so we're like, okay, that way we knew. It's like, okay, you took Tylenol, you took ibuprofen. And then if you're somebody who can't sleep comfortably, and especially if you've had this type of surgery, because you're probably not going to sleep comfortably for a while. I think it was like six weeks for him until he started sleeping comfortably. You may want to have some Tylenol or a leave PM on hand. So you can just maybe take a little half of one to take the edge off so that you can maybe get some sleep. And then you're probably, they tell you not to sleep with this ice machine on there, but come on, you're going to sleep with the ice on you as long as, <laughs> as long as you're comfortable. I mean, I, it's not like it's like ice numbing cold, but it definitely is cold enough to where it is so super, super healing for you. And so, but you may want to get some Aleve PM, Tylenol PM. I know for him personally, he liked the Aleve PM and just like we would just cut little halves. And so if he needed to take that just for pain, oops, just for pain and for sleep, um, he did. And so you definitely might want to try that. Another thing you're going to want to have on hand, if possible, is a recliner. You're going to want to have a recliner. He was thinking, I'll be all right. I'll probably be able to just sleep in the bed. Oh, gosh, no, <laughs> no. Um, we had to, the night he got home from surgery, we all had to haul up to my mom's and we had to get the recliner. I didn't have to do it because I couldn't lift it, but my son and our other son had to go up and get the recliner and bring it down here so that he could sit in that, sleep in it. And guys, he was in the recliner for six weeks. He didn't go back to the bed for six long weeks, not six days, not six hours, six weeks. And so every once in a while though, he got to the point maybe at that four week mark mark ish where he could start falling asleep in the chair but then he could go lay on the couch a little bit as long as he had something kind of to support him and kind of on his back so he wouldn't roll over and roll on that shoulder and stuff and so you're gonna need a recliner so ask a friend if you don't have one ask a family member but get that guy in there before you get home from surgery <laughs> it's gonna save everybody a lot of energy so get a recliner and then food. You're going to want to have food on hand. So hopefully you have some good cooks in your house. I always say this because it's so important. I remember after I had my hysterectomy, people made me like some homemade pop pies and you know you you have homemade spaghettis and salads and just whatever is going to fill you up because when you do start feeling better and you can eat you're going to want some nourishing food and some of that comfort food and so yes you got to eat healthy and yes you're going to probably want to eat some fiber and some fruits to get the vitamins and stay hydrated and drink lots of water and I know like if you're somebody who drinks a lot of pop or sparkling stuff that wasn't working for him like he's a sparkling water guy and like drinks it daily but I for the first couple of weeks he wasn't even able to do that just because of the gas and the bloat and taking the medication around the, the clock. It was actually just making everything worse. So he just started drinking straight up just water, like no pop, no sparkling, anything, just water. But you're going to have some meals prepped, ready to go in the fridge. And I, I like to prep anyways. And for me, it just makes life easier. So it's just like, oh, you're hungry. Oh, there you go. And then I don't have to rush around like a mad woman. So I kind of had all that already prepped. And then let's see what else you might want to have on hand. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Guys, I don't think that I am. I think those are kind of my practical go-to things for it. And you're going to want to have a good helper. So I don't know who it's going to be, but if you're one of those people who are like, I'll be fine after a week, well, maybe you will, but maybe you won't. <laughs> so you may want to have somebody on speed dial, okay? Honestly, I we already know people are all different. So some people are going to need you the full maybe like six to 12 weeks. Some people are maybe just going to need you for a week, a couple of days. I don't know. But I think this is one of those things where you're going to want to have a good helper on hand because you need it for everything. I mean, genuinely, I mean, especially like come shower time and washing time because you've got like the sling for the shower and then you've got the, your big giant sling, which it intimidated me that first night like I said I was crying like I was just like I don't know if I can do this I don't know and so I had somebody tell me well it's just like a hunting backpack and I'm like what are you talking about but there was a strap here and a strap here and velcro here and velcro there and I'm like oh no and so again I just didn't want to hurt him and so <laughs> that first night I was bawling like a baby like I don't think I can do this how do people do this and so kudos to the doctors and nurses because you can do this but my week, I would say week two, I was an old professional. I was like, all right, give me the arm. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> but the first few days, I wasn't feeling boom, 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 boom. Um, and so give yourself a little bit of grace and some time. But those of you who are going to be the patients, you're going to need a 
over. You're going to. In fact, I don't even know after any major surgery how people would do it if you didn't have like some loving people there to help you out a little bit, whether it be with laundry, with life, driving. I don't know. You're going to need a helper. So, but anyways, hopefully a few of these little things helped you. And I know that they helped us for sure. And one last thing, because I've just seen it sitting over here. So I must have wanted to show you guys it. <laughs> it's a weird thing. But if the Colex doesn't work by chance, okay, just by chance, if you're like, okay, I've taken the Colex, uh, nothing's working, you're on your pain medications, and everything is just miserable. I was told by a reliable source who had the surgery that said, okay, it didn't work for me, so I had to get out the big gun. Okay, guys, this is what we got. And this is like under, I think, like $2. You can get it at any of your department stores. You can get it anywhere. <laughs> it's going to be in the tummy medicine aisle. But it was the magnesium citrate. Okay, so there you go. Um, this right here, I definitely would not take until it's a last resort. Like, put it up on the shelf. Like, it's just like, okay, I'm like several days in and things aren't happening. Then you're going to get out this because I think that this might be kind of the same stuff that you take when you've had a colonoscopy. <laughs> so if you've had a colonoscopy, we already know how fun that stuff is. It's not fun. And I guess the instructions, even for this, is you're going to drink like a half a bottle of this and... Well, there you go. Something tells me that um, things will be moving. But the last thing you're going to want to do is be in the bathroom like all day long, right? Especially after you've had surgery and stuff. It's like you're not going to want to do that. So again, this I heard really, really, really works. But you're going to want to use it as a last resort. And yeah, I think that's about all I got for you. <laughs> Guys, hopefully, um, if you're having rotator cuff surgery, um, you have very, very good healing, a very, very good surgeon. And I will definitely say a prayer for you. We are 12 weeks post recovery right now, still not back to work because we're still on limited movement. So the doctor's like not releasing you yet. I mean, he can be released to light duty, but not to what he needs to do for his job. And so He's in 12 weeks taking kind of like a very long extended vacation. <laughs> I think he was hoping to be back to work by now, but that's not the case yet. So hopefully maybe in a month at his next appointment, some of those restrictions will be lifted and can maybe get back to work a little bit. But I know just by talking to some people who have had rotator cuff surgery, especially if you've had severe rotator cuff surgery, torn bicep, torn labrum, um, it can be anywhere up to about six months. And so you want to do it right because you don't want to re-tear it. You definitely want it to do the healing that it needs to do. And um, doing physical therapy two to three times a week has been amazing. And now it's getting to the point where they're really starting to get in there. At first, it was kind of like little tickle, tickle massage. Let's just kind of move it a little here and there. They'll give you some exercises to kind of do at home and then some things that they'll do with you once you're able to go in and start doing physical therapy with them. But now he said it's to the point where it's just like he's sweating in there because it's a little bit painful, the stuff that they're making you do. But but at the same time, we know that that brings on the healing. And so it promotes the healing. And so 12 weeks and hopefully it just continues to get better and better from here. And so we'll see. But hopefully if you have the surgery, God bless. I hope that it's a speedy recovery and hopefully some of these things helped. Have a good night.